Okay guys, we are going to start off with the easy ones, uh, specifically the oil pressure and water temperature. So as you can see right here, I've got a uh, interactive uh, wiring diagram and uh, this is already set up up here with our uh, 1996 Chevrolet Suburban K2500. Um, this process is similar for all of the 5.7 liter, the 6.5 liter, and the 7.4 liter versions. You're going to do essentially the same thing uh, regardless of your original engine. So like I said, we're going to start with two of the easy circuits to get you kind of <clears throat> warmed up for this and uh, follow through on the process. And hopefully by the end of this, uh, all this wiring stuff will not be a uh, mystery to you and you'll be able to tackle it uh, with some confidence. So. Let's get right down to it. I'm going to start with the uh, instrument cluster and we'll make it big screen. And here is the instrument cluster. Right here you can see instrument cluster and then all of these lights as well as all of these gauges. So specifically the one we are going to do first is the oil pressure is right here and if you trace these two wires down you have a pin number 31 off of the instrument cluster and a pin number 15 that come from the oil pressure if you analyze pin 31 you can see every one of these little nodes or dots ties in to all of the other gauges the tack the fuel gauge the voltmeter and so does these up here. Now, pin 31, to get you guys an idea as to how this is gonna work, corresponds to this number system down here, which is the connector that plugs in directly behind the instrument cluster. So we're going to trace pin 31 to see what it is. Most likely, it is a black wire right here, and um, we're going to do some highlights to make this easier for you guys to follow. It is a black wire, pin 31. I'm going to highlight it blue right there. And then I'm going to turn off all the other wires so that it is easier to follow on this screenshot. Okay, so that is the only wire on this diagram. We're going to trace it down and see where it goes. Okay, so it goes right here, and this symbolizes a uh, ground, and the location of the ground, it's ground number G202, location of the ground is the left side of the instrument panel. Okay, so pin 31 is a ground for all of the gauges. Um, because we're not working in the instrument panel and in theory that uh, circuit was never touched you don't need to worry about it so pin 31 is uh, is a non-issue it is a ground so we're gonna reset this now so the other terminal off of the oil pressure is pin number 15 so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna find pin number 15 we're gonna highlight it we're going to close all the other ones, turn the highlighter off. It is a tan wire, and let's see where it goes. Okay, so it goes down right here to the oil pressure switch and sender, which is located on the left rear side of the engine. So when you guys are removing your 6.5 liter or your 5.7 liter or your 7.4 big block whatever your original engine is you will need to locate this tan wire as well as this oil pressure sender which is located on the left rear side of the engine and you're going to have to transfer that over to your Cummins um, may or may not have to depending on where this sensor is going to be located on the Cummins you may or may not have to uh, shorten or extend this tan wire. The instrument cluster itself does not care whether you have a Cummins, whether you have a Briggs & Stratton, whether you have a Honda. All it cares about is whether or not this sending unit right here 
is compatible with the gauge and that's why it's important you retain your oil pressure sender and your coolant temp sensor from your original uh, engine and swap those over. Now, be careful, threads on this oil pressure sender may or may not be different than the corresponding threads um, in your Cummins. So you may need to come up with some adapters. Now that we've uh, traced out the oil pressure sender, we're gonna go ahead and reset it. And we're gonna go to the temperature gauge. Temperature gauge has two wires coming out of it. Again, one goes to uh, pin 31, which we already traced out to a ground. Um, and it's very important that all of the grounds that you remove off of your original engine uh, be retained and replaced so that all of the sensors have uh, good grounding. So the other pin is pin 13. So we're going to go ahead and highlight pin 13. We'll turn all these off. And it is a dark green wire. We'll trace it down. And it goes to the engine coolant temp sensor sender on the left side of the engine block. So again, just like the oil pressure sender that we just talked about, <clears throat> you need to locate this and retain it and then either extend or shorten this dark green wire uh, accordingly so that the uh, sensor can be connected to your gauge. Now, this little symbol right here is a ground symbol and when it is directly mounted to the bottom of the sender, that means that the sender is grounding through the housing of the sender into the engine block. And it only has one wire and it grounds through the engine block, meaning you do not have to run a separate ground wire to this sending unit. <laughs> you do, however, have to make sure that the engine itself is grounded very well to the battery as well as the chassis. And finally, the engine block is grounded to the body. So that takes care of your oil pressure gauge hookup as well as your temperature gauge hookup. And now let's move on to the tachometer. Okay, we are still on our instrument cluster. We are going to be talking about tachometer. As you can see right up here, we're still working on the instrument cluster for the 6.5 liter diesel version. And we're gonna start with the diesel version and then I'll switch over to the gas version to show you guys uh, the differences. And we'll talk about the tachometer conversion box and what it is used for. Okay, so uh, same as your temperature gauge and your oil pressure gauge, we need to trace this wire. It is pin number six right over here. It's a white wire. So we'll go ahead and highlight pin number six. We'll hide everything else and we'll see where it goes. It goes right down here to the generator. They call it the generator. It can be called the alternator, <clears throat> but on the diesel version of these uh, Suburbans and trucks, um, the tachometer signal comes directly from the generator. So with that said, when you guys are doing your 6BT swap into your Suburbans, if you can source a diesel instrument cluster, you gain a lot of things that make the swap easier. The weight to start light is one of them, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, as well as a tachometer that is compatible with a pickup directly off of the W terminal on the alternator. So I have another video that shows how you take the, uh, the Danzo uh, the Denso style alternator that comes originally on the Dodge and adds the uh, W terminal um, to it. And you can run that directly uh, to this white wire and your uh, instrument cluster and tachometer will read uh, with a relatively decent amount of accuracy. It's not perfect. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and switch, switch over to the instrument cluster for a gas version. Here is the 7.4 liter. And we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and trace the tachometer wire on the gas version. So you guys can see where it goes. So again, here's the tachometer. Goes to pin six. We'll highlight pin six. And 
we'll see where the tax signal comes from. Okay, so this white wire right here goes to the ignition coil right rear side of the engine. So unfortunately, if you are starting with a gasoline uh, powered vehicle, either the big block or the small block, 5.7 or the 7.4, um, your tachometer comes signal comes from the ignition coil, the negative side of the ignition coil. And because it's coming from the ignition coil, the tachometer itself in your cluster is calibrated differently than the uh, diesel version. And for that reason, you have two options. You can swap the instrument cluster out with a diesel version and run it direct, or you can uh, install the Dakota Digital Tachometer Conversion Box. And what that does is it takes the signal from the alternator. You'll still need to pick up the, connect this white wire to the alternator, the W terminal of the alternator, and you'll cut it and you'll wire it to the Dakota Digital Box. And then that Dakota Digital Box will perform the conversion that now allows this tachometer to read the correct RPMs based off of the signal. Um, so that takes care of the tachometer. Now we are going to go ahead and move on to the speedometer hookup. We're gonna do the same thing you've seen me do. Here's the speedometer right there. Identified it as pin number 14. Now be careful, pin 13 and pin 14, both of them <coughs> are labeled dark green. That's where this uh, trace function really works out pretty well. I'm highlighting pin 14 and we're gonna see where it goes. Now, as you can see, it goes right over here to line number five, line number five on the next figure. So I'm going to transfer over We'll zoom in and we'll find line five. There's line five. Highlight that and trace where it goes. It comes down over here and <clears throat> goes into a node or a splice. And that splice goes over into, goes to the vehicle speed sensor buffer behind the right side of the instrument panel, as well as the engine control system. Okay, so if we scroll up here, you'll see the vehicle speed sensor left rear of the transmission. Okay, so on four-wheel drive vehicles, this will actually be on the transfer case output shaft. So keep that in mind. And then also note right here where it says twisted pair. And what that means is that this is a shielded uh, pair of wires, uh, purple and white, as well as light green and black. Now, if you guys are going to run the US shift controller for your automatic transmission, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to identify the purple wire and the light green and black wire, and you're going to need to splice into those and give the US shift the signal from this speed sensor. <clears throat> So essentially you're going to be running this speed sensor uh, parallel. So this speed sensor is gonna be feeding both the speed sensor buffer as well as the US shift. And the reason you need to maintain a speed sensor signal to this buffer is so that it does not interfere with your analog brakes. You can see this speed sensor buffer right here on this white wire goes to your anti-lock brake system. And we don't want to interfere with the anti-lock brake system. Okay, so US shift, identify these two wires, the purple and white, as well as light green and black, and tie into those with your US shift box, but uh, run it in parallel. So you are basically scabbing on from this sensor you're not going to touch anything else with the speed sensor buffer or any of that. Now going back to our gauge cluster, the US shift controller has a speed sensor output. 
So we're going to highlight 14. <coughs> and you're going to take the speed sensor speedometer output from your US shift and you're going to actually cut you're going to actually cut cut this pin 14 you're going to cut that wire and you're going to wire the speedometer directly to the US shift meaning you're going to cut it and after you cut it, you're going to leave the downstream side, the side that goes to the speed sensor buffer, you're going to leave that as just a dead end wire. And then the wire that goes into pin 14, which goes to your speedometer, is going to get its signal from the US shift. The speed sensor buffer doesn't care what, what's going on with the speedometer. All it cares about is that it has a, a good signal from the existing speed sensor. And by doing, by wiring it this way, you essentially are tying the speedometer itself to the US shift, which allows you to calibrate it, which is great because then you can change gears, you can put bigger tires, and you can calibrate your speedometer so that it reads an accurate speed. And that is how you wire in your speedometer.